The Hartley Show is an entertainment program and does not own any of the copyrighted material featured in this episode. All copyrighted material featured will be used as fair use for the purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, and or research. Talkie talkie. Today on The Hartley Show, I'm going to be talking about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Spoiler alert, I liked it. Yeah. So let's get right the heck into this. I'm going to talk about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Now, obviously, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the world's critics hate this movie. I think the last thing I noticed was it was at 30%. Is that right on Rotten Tomatoes? About that. But uh, roughly, we're looking at, um, I think, a 71% approval rating from uh, fans. And I've certainly noticed that most people I know that have seen it are loving the movie and sort of rallying against the critic hatred. And regardless of critical hate, it did do incredibly well. I believe this is the highest uh, domestic and worldwide box office for this particular weekend. I think it was something like 251 domestic and 420 odd million worldwide or something like that. Giant, giant weekend sales wise. So it does at least put the franchise in a good position moving forward. And I do suspect that uh, Suicide Squad will herald a little bit more critical success. I keep on looking over at Troy because I want him to make me feel better about things for some reason. I keep trying to interject, but you don't. You don't give me a interject, moment. Troy. You don't give me a moment. Interject. To I, well, I, everything no, I was going to say is I we said passed it. it. I said <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say because it's on track to be the highest non-summer opening. There you go. On track to deny it. What Troy said. Now. I think that the, the difficult thing here, talking about Batman v Superman, is that myself in particular, I went into the movie already loving the characters, already loving where things were, so I practically loved the movie before I even saw the damn thing. Now what we're talking about is a movie that seems categorically designed to appeal to comic fans more than regular non-comic fans, especially the more you know about the DC Universe, the more the movie ultimately makes sense to you. That you do a lot of sort of repetitive stuff, a dream sort of sequences throughout the movie, and there's one quite uh, well um, uh, uh, shown dream sequence, Batman in this desert. We saw it in a lot of the commercials, Superman with a bunch of Superman soldier guys. Now, spoiler alert, I am going to give my theory on what this this particular dream sequence is all about. And I believe that it's not a dream sequence. I believe this is the Flash coming from the future and bringing him an actual vision of something that happens in the future. Now, this is I'm basing this off of a pre-existing storyline. In the, uh, the very tail end of the Superman animated series, the storyline going was that Darkseid comes and takes over Superman and makes him his pawn. And there's been stories like this in the past. There was a great Elseworlds comic book, I believe it was called Superman the Dark Side, where Superman's rocket ship actually lands on Apocalypse and uh, Darkseid uses him as a pawn to take over the galaxies and blah, blah, blah. But this particular dream sequence has confused the hell out of a lot of people. Now, me being a comic fan, it all made sense to me. I felt like I'd seen this before and I was confused by any of it. But for non-comic fans, they have no idea what's going on. And these, the repetitive use of dream sequences in the movie I think it was the in, the intention of Zack Snyder was to make people question it, but this this intention to make people not really know what's going on, I think, is one of the reasons the critics are quite upset with the movie. I think it, it takes for granted comic fans' pre-knowledge of the way uh, 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 things are laid out. Troy? And I, well, I had a similar thought, and I think it's supported by the fact that you have that moment where the Flash is coming through that portal and yes, saying, yes. you know, you have to stop. I'm too early. Lois is the key. Yeah. You were right to fear him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another big thing about Batman versus Superman is that we are introduced to a version of Batman that is, in my opinion, my take from it is, this is Batman like as if he came right from the Dark Knight Returns. This is almost a Dark Knight version of Batman. He's much older at this point. He suffered through a lot of hardships, and they show you these sprinkle throughout the movie little things like when you see Wayne Manor, it's totally destroyed. Uh, when we see the costume of Robin, it's got the the spray paint from the Joker on it, allegedly, assumedly, you know, assumedly? I think I just made up a word. I think assumedly, you did. Uh, you know, ha ha, the joke's on you. So this is a Batman who's been pushed well past the point. Now, I'm gonna throw out a little spoiler again. The difference is, is that this isn't a Batman that stays dark. This Batman actually redeems himself. The very last sequence at the end of the movie, pretty much, other than 
a sequence I shouldn't talk about that's way too big a spoiler, is a moment where Batman shows mercy in a way he hasn't shown mercy throughout the rest of the film because he's been influenced by Superman's altruism. For those people out there that think that this version of Superman offers no hope, I think they need to watch the movie with a less nasty, negative colored lens. Because what I see in the movie is nothing but a hopeful character. There's this great sequence in the movie where he saves a girl from a burning building during the, uh, the Dance of the Dead ceremony. Is that what it's called? The Dance of the Dead? The Day of the Dead ceremony? Yeah, 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 like and you know, we saw this scene in all the commercials where they show these guys with the, uh, the, the painted skulls in their face sort of worshiping Superman. When it plays out in the movie, it is just more of a sort of hopeful scene where people see this hopeful figure and they desperately want to feel some connection to this being that they think represents nothing but sort of hope. Now there's this sort of religious overtone that they uh, sort of is there in the movie, but I think that we bring that to it. The question of whether or not they're actually aiming for sort of religious overtones, more so discussions about what humanity really is, how we worship hopeful figures, how we elevate them to religious like status. And let's be honest, if a man lived in the world who was like Superman, he would be worshiped like a religious leader. Donald Trump is being worshiped like a religious leader for crying out loud. And he's just a dude with a weird alien thing disguised his hair on top of his head. Or sorry, a comb over. Let's be honest, a comb over. So my takeaway from Batman vs. Superman was that I freaking loved it. But having said that, I'm not going to claim it's the best movie in the world. I think it is a flawed film in, in many ways. But I also suspect that much like Man of Steel, it'll watch better upon uh, multiple viewings. The hardest thing about this movie is to talk about it without actually talking about the ending. The actual ending of the movie is something I don't want to blow for anybody because the, there's, a, there's a lot of big stuff that happens in the end. It's all fairly obvious, but I will say this, and I've sort of alluded to this already. That when you're talking about a character that's been around since 1938, a beloved character that everybody already knows and loves, all of that history comes with him. And I think Snyder was taking that for granted in a way that turned off a lot of people, fans specifically. So I certainly give Batman v Superman giant thumbs up. But I do understand why there's a lot of critical uh, 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 sort of uh, irreverence or uh, dislike of it. Although at the same time, I think that's also largely unfair because Batman v Superman doesn't take place in a bubble where the history of Batman and Superman is negated. There's actually a mention of it. Perry White at one point in the movie says something like, that would fly in 1938, but not now, which is a great nod to the fact that Batman or Superman actually came out in 1938. So I do highly recommend the movie for comic fans, but at the same time, I really recommend that if you go into the movie and you haven't seen it yet, just turn off your brain. Turn off your brain and think of it like a comic book come to life, and that's the through road to, to enjoying it. And I will also, I really need to get this out of, off my chest. There's a lot of people out there that think that people that enjoy the Snyder movies are somehow lesser fans because these versions of Superman and Batman are killers and we've never seen that from them. Action Comics number fucking two, Superman kills two sort of Nazi-esque characters. Action Comics number two, the second ever appearance of Superman. If you think that you know Superman better than the original creators, you're kind of an asshole. I'm just going to leave it at that. So there you have it, Batman vs. Superman. Make up your own darn mind about it, people. As always, a giant thanks to you for watching, a massive thanks to Taz Comics for letting us film here, and please, please, please donate to our Kickstarter, because we need money. Eh?